Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Earth Science Classroom. We are looking at seafloor spreading, which is part of the uh, larger plate tectonics unit. Um, in a previous video, we looked at uh, Mr. Hess in 1962 and 1963. And we looked at uh, seafloor spreading in terms of this is the first time uh, that anyone, any scientist, had discovered that the ocean floor was capable or was moving. Uh, before you know, the 60s, there wasn't the technology to explore the ocean floor. Before sonar, nothing else could really do the job. And it was just down to best guessed um, and estimates, basically. Once Hess came around and used the US Navy experience on the boat with the sonar, and once he started mapping all the ocean floor and found these, these undersea guyotes, which is like ancient um, submerged, uh, rounded off topped volcanoes or volcanic islands uh, that are underwater, he started to explore and he found the mid ocean ridge. He first found it in the Pacific, then he enlarged his search and found it in the Atlantic. Okay, so what we're looking at, this video looks at is uh, what are the pieces of evidence to support the seafloor spreading uh, theory that Hess put forward? So besides Hess looking at the actual ocean floor topography, the like ocean floor it, terrain basically, he also looked at the rocks that were basically underneath the layer of sedimentary strata, because every ocean floor has that that certain depth at the very top of the uh, of the ocean floor, the crust that is sedimentary, and then below that you have the basement uh, kind of consistent uh, igneous rock, and the igneous rock in question is basaltic rock, and basaltic rock is our uh, extrusive igneous rock. It's formed from lava, cooling lava. And it is um, high in iron and magnesium, a little bit of olivine, and there's a touch, a little bit of potassium there as well. So pretty much that's, that means that this, this magma that turns into lava, that turns into basaltic rock, originates from deeper down. So deeper in the asthenosphere, into the mesosphere, kind of part of the mantle. And once you study the age, once you start to date uh, radiocarbon and, and date the rocks, the rocks by the ridge were very, very young compared to the rocks over here, far away from the ridge, that were older. And seeing that the only place available that they could see on the entire ocean floor where it's a possibility or lava does come up through the fractures is at the ridge. This older basaltic rock must have been formed um, by the ridge in the past and the way that it gets from the ridge to its present day location far away is if the ocean floor is slowly spreading and moving away from the ridge. And this is caused by the convection currents as seen here in the red arrows, uh, moving the plates above very slowly through convection. And that's in the asthenosphere. That's just below the moho in the low velocity zone, mostly. So the first bit of evidence was the age and location of the basaltic rock. We'll keep that in the corner. The second one is right here, paleomagnetism. So let's first write down this, this word. Paleo means ancient, old. Magnetism, obviously. The, uh, the element has a magnetic field or can generate a magnetic field. And what is that? That basically is how the electrons basically um, align and go in the same direction. And that force, that, that atomic force of the electrons aligning would create a magnetic field. So ancient magnets. What has this got to do with the seafloor? So two gentlemen by the name of uh, Vine and Matthews. 
and also a guy named Morley. Now, Mo uh, Brian Matthews were English and Morley was Canadian. And they both did separate research, but on the same topic. And they used, they went off, they all went off Hess. Kind of at the same time. So Hess was 62. And these guys were in 1963. So this research was brand new. They kind of inspired these other scientists, gentlemen, to investigate the, the ocean floor with more detail and, 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 you, and find evidence to prove that Hess's theory of the uh, sea floor, ocean floor spreading at the ridge is actually true. So what they found was they found that the rock, basalt, I'm going back to basalt here, basalt is mafic or mafic, and it contains iron oxides. And in the form of this. Titanophus manatite, sounds like a dinosaur. This, this element, okay, this mineral magnetite is made up of iron. And it is naturally magnetic. So iron is ferromagnetic. It's a term, ferro means, uh, is Latin for iron, basically. Iron is the most common naturally magnetic element on Earth. There are other ones like nickel and cobalt, but iron is the most common and what most well known. And I said naturally magnetic because generally these minerals or these elements are cold. They're not really superheated unless they're underground. But the crust, they are kind of like, you know, colder. And there's a certain temperature, the temperature threshold that will either make the iron magnetic or it will cancel it out. It will cancel the magnetism because it will rearrange and disorganize the, the electrons and the iron inside of the material. And this is called the Curie point named after the lady that found it or discovered it. And the Curie point is the temperature at which an element ceases to have magnetism. Now, in case of the iron, iron is at 770 degrees Celsius. So anything above this temperature, iron will not have a strong or maybe not at all magnetic signature. It won't have any magnetic properties. However, below this temperature, which is most of the iron in the crust, it will have a consistent and considerable magnetic properties or characteristic. This is called the Curie point. So what they saw is what Vine, Matthews, and Morley found in the basalt is when the basalt comes from lava, okay, and it's cooling, and it's consolidating. And it's crystallization or crystallizing. So going back to our rock cycle terms now. The magnetite crystals, when they start to cool down and organize themselves from a, from a liquid melt magma into a solid structure, which is basalt, the rock, they naturally point towards the magnetic field of the Earth. As you see here, this diagram, this little flow diagram I've drawn, is you begin with basaltic magma deep in the asthenosphere. So there's uprising at the mid-ocean ridge through convection currents, decompression melting, so on and so forth. And you get this basaltic lava that is flowing from the ridge onto the ocean floor surface, and it is now uh, going to cool. It's going to cool and crystallize, cool down. It's going to crystallize. And the magnetite 
that is what the uh, basaltic magma is mostly or somewhat composed of, that and olivine. The magnetite is, uh, is the little bits of red arrows like this. And they're inside the basaltic solid rock that's now part of the ocean crust. And it's very young, right by the ridge. And the magnetite minerals are all aligned according to the current magnetic polarity. of the earth so they're all going to point the same direction and vine and matthews and morley all saw this with their research and uh, experiments they all saw this um and even back in uh, iceland iceland fishermen and mariners uh, found this out that there was a strong magnetic uh, anomaly uh in the 18th century that it took until 1963 Vine, Matthews, and Morley to come up with this hypothesis or and, and theory or to prove as a piece of evidence to prove Hess's seafloor spreading just a year after Hess had suggested it. So this is paleo magnetism. In the next video, we'll look at the application of this. So what did Vine, Matthews, and Morley do with this information and how did it show up on the ocean floor to show that the ocean floor is spreading? Because in one theory, you would think that the ocean floor is continuously or, you know, modestly the same polarity as shown by the magnetite in the basaltic rock. But it wasn't. And uh, tune into the next uh, video to see the effects and the outcome of this research. So hopefully you like this video. Uh, please subscribe. And uh, I'll also uh, upload videos of how to present this uh, to the students in different activities and different methods.